we want to walk you to the 1130 uh, Wednesday lunch and Bible study from Doctrinal Studies Bible Church in Birmingham, Alabama. We are currently in a series called The Foundation Doctrines of the Holy Spirit taught by Jesus at the Last Supper. At, we've been dealing with the period of the Last Supper, which is John 13 through 17 chapters. And we've been looking at Jesus in John 14, 15 to 16, looking at the, the doctrines that Jesus taught on the Holy Spirit on when he comes, when he comes. Um, and we have been in great discussions on that. I, 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 if, if, I, if I remember right, I believe that we're, this is our 10th lesson, but it's the seventh. Today we're going to talk about the seventh, because I've done other studies within that structure. This is the seventh foundation doctrine. It doesn't come from John. And so th that's important that I tell you. It does come from the book of John. It's actually, I'm actually going to teach it from Galatians 3, 26 through 29. But the seventh doctrine of the found foundation doctrine of the Holy Spirit, in order to really understand it, because there's, there's so much misunderstanding, I broke it down into two lessons. Last week, I talked about the first part of the seventh doctrine of the foundation doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Today, I'm going to talk about the, the second part. In the first part, Jesus said that he would baptize with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And, and that was in, a, after his ascension. In other words, he, he, he died on a cross for our sins, was buried and raised from the dead. He spent 40 days in post-resurrection appearances. And then he went back to heaven, and 10 days later at the feast called Pentecost, he sent back the Holy Spirit. Now, what that sending back the Holy Spirit is the advent of the Holy Spirit into the new covenant church age. And what, he, what that's referred to in the scriptures about that, the prophetic scriptures about that, is Jesus baptizing with the Holy Spirit. John, John talks about that in Matthew, the third chapter. Well, we talked about it last week. I covered that last week. You see, that's different than the Holy Spirit baptizing. This is Jesus, the second member of the Godhead, baptizing with the Holy Spirit. And when that occurs the Holy Spirit will begin his baptismal ministry in the life of every person that believes the gospel becomes a member of the body of Christ, the church. That's very important that you understand that. There's a difference between Jesus baptizing with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit baptizing. Jesus has to do his part first in order for the Holy Spirit to do his part. And so today we're talking about the baptism by the Holy Spirit. And we're going to, we're, I'm going to try to introduce this to you in four major points on the baptism of the Holy Spirit that's going to be taken from Galatians, the third chapter, 26 through 29. Remember, there is a difference between Jesus baptizing with the Holy Spirit. That's the advent of the Holy Spirit into the world, bringing in a new covenant, Church age. Then once the, the Holy Spirit comes, then he baptizes. He baptizes. The Holy Spirit baptizes. And so we're going to talk about that today. Um, if you're within a driving radius of 40 miles of us here in Birmingham, our church, we have a school of biblical theology and in January, we meet every second and fourth Saturdays of the month. And if you are desiring more Bible information to teach Bible studies, or if you are part of a church leadership team where you're teaching Sunday schools and things like this, this school would be absolutely good for you. And... Um, we start a new series of lessons in the School of Biblical Theology 
uh, in what's called the chaplaincy program uh, for people who have ministries but don't have the ability to go to seminaries and things like that and get their training. Uh, we're going to teach soteriology, that's the study of salvation, and pneumatology, which is the study of the Holy Spirit. Now, I tell you that uh, if you're, and we start at 930 in January. If you're in the vicinity, we'd love to have you come. It doesn't cost you anything to attend the school. It's financed uh, by other people who believe in the ministry. And um, we would love to have you. And, I, and you will learn a lot more than I'm teaching you here. I just have an hour here. These classes in the school are two-hour sessions. Well, and they, and they go for a quarter, but for three months. I want to talk about, uh, and so I just want to give you a heads up on it. If you're interested in the ministry of the Holy Spirit, this would be a great opportunity for you. Let me have a word of prayer. The Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. Can't learn it, nor live it in carnality, evidence of carnality, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 3. The evidence of carnality is personal sin. It has the Holy Spirit who lives in you that's not permitted to leave, John 14, 16, and 17, comes at the moment of salvation for you and I in the church age, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Well, to get out of carnality and back into spirituality, which is the ministry of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you have to confess your sins. First John 1, 9, if I confess my sins, I'm, he, God, is faithful and just to forgive me and to cleanse me. That cleansing takes me as a believer back to the cross of Jesus Christ for the cleansing of my sin, not for salvation, but for, for sanctification, for the ministry of the Holy Spirit so I can walk in the Spirit, not in the flesh, Galatians 5.16. So confession of sin allows the cleansing of 1 John 1, seven to work in my life in 1 John 1.9 by confession of my sin to the Father, I acknowledge that I've been carnal, that I've walked in the flesh. I've, I've lived the, my life unto myself and not as unto the Lord. And when I confess that to the Father, to my Abba Father, the blood of Christ from the cross works to the Christian life to move me from carnality back to spirituality. It's a wonderful grace system. It works by grace, just like your salvation. So I give you a moment. Make your confession. It could be mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, or overt sins. Need to be confessed in silence and privacy. In your heart, well, I mean, if you want to do it out loud, you can do it if you're alone. But if you're not alone, then you should do it privately. You got to name your sins. <laughs> <laughs> our heavenly father we thank you today for these that have come our way by the internet we thank you for this wonderful ministry and the team in our church that provided on a grace basis i pray the holy spirit would minister the truth he is called the spirit of truth out of john 14 15 and 16 it is a a, a, a title that he has once jesus sends him sent him into the world he will be in the world until the church is removed by the rapture. It is his great ministry on earth as the third member of the Godhead. We are thankful for that, Father. He, he will teach and recall. He will, he will guide us. He will disclose to us. He will testify of Christ from us. He will do all these wonderful things, Father, because of the grace that you've bestowed upon us through our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray today the Holy Spirit would have this great uh, in, inner ministry in every person's life of teaching us the truth that will set us free from the cosmic lies of the devil. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, point number one, this is really important you get this. Here's how this thing works for you, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. At the moment a person believes the gospel of grace salvation, on the back, Back here, you'll see a, a symbol of the gospel. There's no other way that sins can be paid for. Everybody's a sinner because of Adam's sin. Thirteen judicial charges upon their life that will send them to hell if they don't believe the gospel of Christ. 
They got to believe the gospel of Christ. The only way to the Father is through the Son. And the only way to the Son is that you've got to believe he came and died for your sins, was buried, and raised on the third day. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Romans 1, 16 says, when you believe that, the gospel, which I just explained, death, burial, and resurrection, on, the, on that backdrop, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. You've got to believe it. Can't work to get it. You've got to believe to get it. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, therefore, you are saved by grace. That's the work of God through Christ. You're saved by grace through faith and not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works. The boast doesn't go to you. It goes to God. It goes to the Lord Jesus Christ, who was faithful not to do his will, but God's will, and to die for the sins of humanity. You were a sinner, not because you sinned. You're a sinner because you're an Adam. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. In Adam, all die spiritually. In Christ, all are made alive spiritually. So there you are. So the first thing you have to understand is that the moment a person believes the gospel of Jesus Christ, the 13 judicial charges of Adam's sin are removed from his life in time and eternity. In time and eternity. Just like Romans 5, 12 through 21 reminds us. In Romans 5, 12, Paul wrote, Therefore, just as through one man, Adam, Genesis 2, 16, 17, sin entered into the world, spiritual, spiritual, that's spiritual whole idea, sin entered the world through Adam into us. And spiritual death and, and sin entered into the world and death through that sin, Adam's sin, spiritual death, and in spiritual death, this spiritual death spread to all mankind for all have sinned in Adam. Okay? So it's very important that you understand that. Very important you understand that. On the top of your paper, you could put two circles, one on the right, one on the left. On one circle, you could write the name Adam. On the other circle, you could write the name Christ. And you could write, in between them, you could write 1 Corinthians 15, 22. In Adam all die. In Christ all are made alive. Now, in between these two circles, put that symbol of the gospel. That's the symbol of the gospel, that Christ died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day, third day of the burial, to give you life everlasting, to give you a relationship with God for time and eternity. Now, underneath that symbol right there at the top of your paper, between these two, you put that between these two circles, write Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. Then I want you to do something. This is really important. When you believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead on the third day of his burial to give you life everlasting. He did something wonderful. So I want you, I want you to t go to the cross and up there where the crosses are divided, take your pen and, and loop the Draw a line up and over to the circle with Adam. And write the word rescue. Because the moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel rescues you from your position in Adam under 13 judicial charges of Adamic sin. Genesis 2, 16, 17. The moment you believe you are rescued from there. Go back to that point on the cross where the crosses meet. Go back to that and take your pencil and loop it over to the circle that says Christ and write the word delivered. The moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are 
you are rescued from Adam and you are transferred, delivered or transferred over to Christ. In that moment, you believe that occurred. Now, I'm in Galatians. I hope you are in the book of Galatians. I'm, in the first, I'm looking at the first chapter, and here's 13 and 14. For he delivered us from the, or rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the beloved son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. See, he rescues us and transfers us into Christ. It's called redemption. <laughs> it's called redemption and the forgiveness of sin. So in Romans 5.21, it reads, So then, as sin reigned in death, Adam's sin, even so grace would reign through the righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. When does Jesus Christ become our Lord? Once you are transferred, rescued, and transferred into Christ, he is now your Lord. He's Jesus Christ, our Lord. That's Colossians 1, 13, 14. And that's the first most important thing that's connected with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a grace gospel. He died for your sins, not for his. He died for the sins of the world. John, John the Baptist said in John 1, 29, Behold the Lamb of God that's come to take away the sin of the world. So here's a second point of great importance. At the same time that he rescued you from Adam and transferred you into Christ called redemption, and the forgiveness of sin, of the transgression of Adam's sin that's upon your life, no longer guilty of that. Listen, no longer guilty, forgiven, judicially forgiven, forgiven of that sin. At the same time, this is point number two, at the same time that this occurred when you believe the gospel, You received, because we're under the new covenant church age, you receive eight works of the Holy Spirit. Now, you can find all of this on our website. Go to our page, doctrinalstudies.com, and look for 50 free things. And you can read these. You can, you can look up the scriptures and you can see. He does eight works of the Holy Spirit at the point of salvation. The moment you believe the gospel, not only does he rescue you from Adam, the 13 judicial charges of Adam's sin, but he transfers you into the whole entire grace program that God has called the package of salvation. And, and what you get at the same moment that you believe and get rescued and transferred in that transferal, you get eight works of the Holy Spirit that you can never lose in time and eternity. You get adoption. You get baptiz baptism of the Holy Spirit. You get the indwelling. You get regeneration, redemption, propitiation. Saint to, you know, if you get that pamphlet, you'll know it. If you look up those 50 free things, you'll, you'll learn this. You get... You get sanctified. You get set apart uh, unto God in this world, in time as well as in eternity. You get sanctified. It's positional sanctification that's important for you to know. You get sanctified in Christ. You are sealed until the day of redemption. That's the, that's the end of the church age. When you receive your resurrection body. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. So 
You get sanctified, you get, you get sealed, you get a spiritual gift that, that, that identifies your ministry in the church. 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14. You get spiritual life, spiritual life that death has no influence over. Spiritual life. It's given to you at the moment of salvation. It's given to you by the Holy Spirit. And you have it forever. John 14, 16 to 17. When he comes into your life, he is there forever. The spiritual light is forever. These, these, these are both for time and eternity. All of the, the eight works. Now, one of those eight works is baptism of the, by the Holy Spirit. So let me explain it to you. Let's go to the book of Galatians, the third chapter. I'm going to look at verse 26 through 29. Let me get it over here. And I know if, if, if you go online, you'll, in a day or so, you'll be able to pick up our notes I don't know if they're there now or not, but you, you, they will soon be there. And when we read these, verse 26, 27, 28, and 29, I want you to look. I've separated them on your paper, but there's a unique feature in 26, 27, 28, and 29. There are four unique features uh, involved with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I don't want you to miss this. This is dynamite. Okay, so here's verse 26. And he, he, earlier he's talked about the faith, you know, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves to gift to God that business, not by law, not by works of the law. No, no, no. See, the book of Romans and the book of Galatians both teach you that. In verse 26 he says, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So on verse 26, the key thing I want you to write down on your paper is that when you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, whoever you are or everyone who does believe becomes a son of God. All. For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Christ, the Old Testament, John says, shadow Christology, John says in 129, behold the Lamb of God that's come to take away the sin of the world. What kind of crazy farm deal is that? A lamb from the farm? Well, it comes from shadow Christology and the offering of the Lamb's blood which was a shadow or a picture to come of Christ coming and dying on the cross, shedding his blood for our sins. It required his life blood. The uniqueness of about it is that his blood was pure. He was a hypostatic person. He was both 100% God and 100% man in, in human form. Now, I know that's difficult for people to understand. But look, it's what it is. 2 Corinthians 5.21, he who knew no sin had no experience with it like you and I do. We sin because we're a sinner. And we don't have any options about it other than willpower. And that won't save you. Might help you deal with certain types of sin, but not all of them. But listen, when you get saved, you have the indwelling Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, that is there. What can control my sin nature that causes me to lust for sin is the Holy Spirit that lives inside of me. Boy, you, you just need to read Galatians 5, 16 and 17. I mean, the third chapter. Later, you need to read the fifth chapter. 
what is the power in a believer's life that can control the sin area of his life, the sin nature of his life, that he has from salvation all the way to death or rapture? It is the indwelling power of the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. It is the choices we make. Shall I walk in the flesh or shall I walk in the spirit? Shall I walk by faith or shall I walk by sight? These are choices because we have volition. So I want you to understand that when you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you get a status privilege. One of the things you get is you get the title Son of God. We are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. You know, the word Jesus, Savior, our Savior. Verse 27, so the key words in verse, key words, the key in verse 26, all sons of God through faith in the gospel of Christ. In verse 27, for all of you who were baptized into Christ, the moment you became a son of God by believing the gospel of Jesus Christ, you became a son of God and you were baptized into Christ. You cannot become a son of God with equal standing with Christ until you believe that he is your savior. Then he who is the only begotten beloved son of God allows you in him to be called a beloved son of God. You're not the only, and you're not the begotten. But you are the beloved son of God. Verse 27. Watch this now. All of, and all of you who were baptized, the moment you believed, you were baptized. The moment you believed, you became a son of God. And, and not only that, all of you who are baptized have been baptized into Christ, and everybody has who believes the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's positional sanctification. Listen to me now. Have clothed yourself in Christ. So the, the second thing about the importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the one that's mentioned here, is that you've been clothed with Christ. When you read the 50 things that you receive in salvation, the package, and they're not all, that's just 50 great ones. They don't want to overwhelm you too much. Watch this. You are clothed with Christ. In, the, in that 50 things you receive, there's a part there called privileges and status. Status, it's status privileges that come with being baptized into Christ. 20 status privileges. For example, he's a son, you're a son. He's eternal life, you're eternal life. He's a priest, you're a priest. He's an heir, you're an heir. And that list goes on. It's called positional sanctification. It's done by the Holy Spirit at the baptism. The moment you believe, you are baptized into Christ. And with that, you are clothed with Christ. The issue in the Christian life is to become what you've been born to be. Become what you have been born again to be. Become what you've been born again to be. You're not what the world calls you. You are what Christ calls you. God calls you by your identity in Christ. For all of you who are baptized in Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. The baptism of the Holy Spirit causes you to be clothed in Christ. Positional sanctification. 28. As a result of being baptized into Christ... And clothing yourself with Christ, you're no longer clothed as the world views you and not even as God views you any longer once you've been born again. You, you are neither Jew nor Gentile. 
Watch this now. You are neither Jew nor Gentile, Greek. You are neither slave nor free, man. There is neither male nor female. No, you are all one in Christ. You need to get that. In verse 28, the key is you are all, all are one in Christ. That's equality. That's spiritual equality. He's a son, you're a son. He's an heir, you're an heir, etc. Look up those 20 things and read them. I don't have time today to do all that, but I'm referring you to where you can learn them. I'm just showing you Paul is just going over. Paul's, listen, Paul's talking. is like a pastor. I wouldn't. I, my uh, People have sat with me for 47 years. I've taught this stuff for seven, 47 years. You're just maybe hearing it for the first time. Listen, if you think you're going to get it in the first time, you're wrong. You need study and study and study and study this. You need to look up the scriptures and study the word of God. Verse 29, if you belong to Christ, maybe you do, maybe you don't, but if you belong to Christ, then this is true. If you belong to Christ, now listen to me. The moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you've been rescued from the domain of darkness in Adam's sin and the world. You have been rescued and transferred into Christ, into the light of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of the beloved son. If you read Colossians 1, 13, 14. If you belong to Christ, if you belong to Christ, how do I know if I belong to Christ? There are a lot of people that don't know who they belong to. It's, listen, you belong to whoever's your master. And to whomever you're a master, you're a slave. That's a good thing with God. It's a bad thing with the world. Because the world sucks the life right out of you, and God keeps pouring it into you. Jesus is the source of life, and, and Adam is the source of death, and the world is the source of death. They feed death. God feeds life. They feed, the world feeds death. God feeds life. If you think you're going to find life from a dead world, you're dead wrong. <laughs> if we belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Isn't that wonderful? All sons of God. All sons of God through faith in Christ are clothed with Christ. They're baptized into one in Christ. All the sons of God belong to Christ, and they are now heirs of the promise of the Abrahamic covenant that are found in the seed into Christ. On your paper, the word should be God. God has a free gift for you this Christmas, which keeps on giving even when Christmas Day is done. To all who believe the gospel of grace salvation. What a wonderful thing. Now, point number two. At the moment of grace salvation, the baptism by the Holy Spirit places the person who believes the gospel, place, places that person into Christ. So I want you to do something. I want you to write, it, I want you to write that, that symbol of the gospel again. I want you to write it again. Take your pencil, point it right there, and go straight up, straight off to the side like this. Go off to the side, go over by where that arrow is, draw a line past that arrow, go past that arrow, and draw, draw a circle. In that circle, put in Christ. On that line from the cross to the circle, 
put BHS, BHS, baptism of, by, by the Holy Spirit. And what that is called is positional sanctification in Christ. How do I get in Christ? I must believe the gospel. Then I am, in my transferal into the kingdom, I am baptized by the Holy Spirit into Christ. That's Gal I just read that. That's Galatians 3.27. Here it is. For all of you who were baptized into Christ. How were we baptized? We got to be sons of God. How we become sons of God? Faith in the gospel. Verse 26 leads to 27, 27, 28, 29. All of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. All of you. Listen, the moment you believe you are baptized into, you are baptized by the Holy Spirit into Christ. That's called positional sanctification. That's positional, that's a positional truth. Second Corinthians 5, 17. If any man be in Christ, then he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. If we're in Christ, we're a new creation. In Christ. I used to be a sinner. Now I'm a saint. I used to be unrighteous. Now I'm righteous. I used to be ungodly. Now I'm godly. You understand? Read that pamphlet. I used to be an Adam. Now I'm in Christ. I'm no longer an Adam. Now I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ in time and eternity. Positional sanctification. Romans 8, 1. In Adam, I was condemned. In Adam's sin, I was condemned. Romans 8, 1. In Adam, I was condemned. Verse Romans 8, 1. There is therefore. Isn't that an interesting way he said that? There is therefore. There is therefore. That's because... He's taught, he's taught him the first six chapters of Genesis. And really the emphasis that Paul's in chapter 8 is the emphasis that has come in Romans chapter 6, 7, and 8. Chapter 6, 7, and 8. There is therefore. <laughs> this is just kind of interesting the way it's written. There is therefore now no condemnations for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then he goes on to teach you that we're under the law of the Spirit, capital H, Holy Spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and has set us free. Paul well, says, to be a minister of, of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, talking about his ministry, ministering as a priest the gospel of God, that no offering of the Gentiles might become acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in Christ Jesus, I have found reason for boasting in things pertaining to God. What's happened to your life, Ron Adema? <laughs> uh, in a short, I got saved. I got saved. I got sanctified by the Holy Spirit. I get, I, my life got set apart for the Advent ministry of the Holy Spirit in human history called the New Covenant Church Age. My life has been set apart by the Holy Spirit to boast about God. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Ma, ma, ma. Sanctified, acceptable. If I'm acceptable and I am in Christ, then I've been sanctified by the Holy Spirit. I've been sanctified. You should read 1 Corinthians 6.11. <laughs> 
and pay attention to the word but. He uses it four times with, to clear up some issues. You should read that. It is so good. 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 and 14. We should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning. You pay attention to that word beginning. It takes in God's attitude of 2 Peter 3, 9. God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to eternal life. gives you the glimpse of God in the beginning. Why was there such a beginning? Why is there a beginning? And your life should always be beginnings. It's always the beginnings. Every day you should be talking about some of the things that God's beginning to do in your life. You shouldn't be spending all your time talking about, oh, there was a day when my life, when I was hungry for the word of God, I was on fire for God, I was doing this, I was doing that. Listen, listen, that's, now that's speaking. Listen, if you're speaking in the past about that, then you've lost your boast in God. You've lost your beginnings You've lost your beginnings. Every day is a new day of beginnings in God. He is the, he is the God of life. What have you got to boast about from yesterday to today? What have you got to boast about today? Listen, you... you you're not paying attention to this stuff. Because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. Through sanctification, that's positional sanctification, at the point of believing the gospel of Jesus Christ, you got baptized by the Holy Spirit into, into Christ. That's positional sanctification. It was for this that he called you through the gospel and that you may gain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know what's interesting about sanctification? You got it by grace. You'll always have it by grace. Therefore, you have it even when you're carnal. You didn't lose your sonship. The, the father is still your Abba Father. He's going to discipline you as a good parent. Hebrews 12. He's going to discipline you as a good parent. A good parent is not going to let you waller in sin and the darkness of the world. He's not going to permit that. He's going to do everything in his power to rescue that person. God cares about you. Read, read, read Luke 15 in the story of the prodigal son. Positional sanctification applies to the carnal believer as well as the spiritual believer because it's based on his positional sanctification is based on grace salvation, the work of Christ on the cross, his burial raised from the dead, Jesus was raised from the place of the dead Sheol by the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in you. That's what Paul thought. That's what he preached. Let me give you another point. This is my final point. At the moment of grace salvation, the baptism of the Holy Spirit not only places you into Christ, but places you into the body of Christ, the church. So let's go back to that. On your paper, I ask you to draw that again. You don't have to. You can just go back to S, draw another line out, put another circle, put B, H, S. That's how you get from the gospel to that circle, baptism of the Holy Spirit. In that circle, write 
member of the body of Christ, the church. Member of the body of Christ, the church. <laughs> this is so good. Oh, dear hearts, this stuff will break your life wide open. You'll be able to live in the freedom of the grace of God if you learn this stuff. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 12th chapter. When you read chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, pay attention to two things when you read them. You ought to count them. The word one and the word many. One and many. Let me show it to you in verse 12, 13, and 14. I'm in 1 Corinthians 12. Have you got your Bible open? Why, why don't you have your Bible open? What do you mean you can't find it? It should be as easy to find in your house as the bathroom. You don't have a problem finding the bathroom, do you? How about the refrigerator? Do you know where the refrigerator is all the time? You know right where it is? I mean, could you find a refrigerator if the lights went out and it got dark? You should know where your Bible is. Come on, you don't use it every day. You use the other two parts every day, don't you? Verse 12, I want the word one and many. In chapter 12, you really pay attention. The word one and many, one and many, one and many. All right, here we go. For even as the body is one and yet has many members and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. The body is Christ. It's the body of Christ. That body of Christ is the church. This is what's discussed in chapter 12, 13, and 14. And, and the word members are the parts. The members are the parts of the body. He's going to go and explain it in chapter 12, verses 12 through 27. We have eyes. The body is, consists of parts or members. Ears, eyes, nose, mouth, yada, yada, yada. Every person at the moment of salvation receives a spiritual gift. He is now a member of the body of Christ. And your identity in the body of Christ is based on your spiritual gift. 1 Corinthians 12. One body, and the one body is Christ. Many members. Every person at the point of salvation receives a spiritual gift. That spiritual gift is his identity in the body, the church of Jesus Christ. My gift is teacher. I guess you know that by now. Or you will learn it if you stay with me. Verse 13, for by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Uh-oh. See there? I got one arrow. The baptism of the Holy Spirit placed me into Christ. And by doing that, placed me as a member into the body of Christ. So I just wanted to show you, even though that's one act, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I wanted you to know how Paul said that. For by one spirit, baptism of the Holy we were all baptized into one body. One spirit baptism. When I was baptized into Christ, I was baptized as a member into the church of Jesus Christ. One body, many parts, many members. 
Verse 13, for by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, we were all made to drink of one spirit. We've heard that before. Equality in the baptism of the Holy Spirit brings us into equality. There's no males or females in Christ. No Jew, no, no Gentile. No slave, no free. And the list goes on. The social, social, social thing. All doesn't matter whether it's racial or social or whatever it is. Educationally, it doesn't matter. What unites us is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The moment we believe it, because of that, you've gained God's favor, and he has done all this stuff for you. It's, and listen, it's done at the act of salvation. It is for time and eternity, w whether you use it or not. Verse 14, for the body is not one member but many. We are part of the body of Christ. That part is our identity in it. It's a spiritually gifted part. This is another aspect of positional sanctification. I'm in Christ. If I'm in Christ, I'm in his body. The church. You should really pay attention. When you read 1 Corinthians 12, pay attention because Paul has pounded this. One body, many members. One body. One body is the theme. Many members, but one body is the theme. In verse 12, 13, 14, 18, 19, 20, 25, 26, 27. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, his advent when the Holy Spirit was sent by Jesus, when Jesus baptized with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit began to baptize, the book of Acts is a clear example of, of how the baptism of the Holy Spirit forms the body of Christ in the world. You, you, and, and listen, the book of Acts runs on the, on the outline or the, the guide of how that's going to be done in Acts 1.8. Acts 1.8, Jesus laid it out before he ascended back to the Father to baptize with the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit could baptize. That, when, it, when it came back, that was Acts 2, and it was called the Feast of, uh, uh, of, temp, of um, Feast of Weeks which we now call Pentecost, 50th day, seven weeks from the resurrection of Christ, 50 days. You missed all that. You should go back and look at the watch. Here you have Acts 2. Listen, listen to Acts 1.8. Oh, my goodness. You will be my witnesses. Now, he says something interesting. He says both. But he mentions four things. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the other most parts of the earth. But he, I don't, now you want, you, 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 you want to open your Bible. Acts 1.8. Yeah. I don't know. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will, and you shall be my witnesses both. A list of four things. <laughs> I don't know how you get both. But here's what he meant. Both. First, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. He separated two groups. The first group is Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. You know what that is? That's Acts 2 to Acts 8. In Acts 9, you get the conversion of Paul. Then you get 10 and 11, 
Peter's awareness that God wants the, that, that salvation on the cross wasn't for the Jew only, but for the Gentile also. That Christ died for all of the sins of the world. At the same time, Paul is getting converted, and he's brought into this awareness. Peter, God has told Peter, open the door of the church. Because when the Holy Spirit baptizes, he baptizes into equality in Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither male nor female. No, no slave or free. We are one in Christ. We are free in Christ. Galatians 1 and 13. You should really study the book of Acts in a whole new light. This is Acts 2. is the beginning of the new covenant. Jesus raised his cup. This cup is, a, is, is the new covenant blood. But it requires him to go to the cross. And for this to become a historical reality, he's got to spend 40 days in post resurrection. And then he's got to go back. And 10 days later, after a session, after ascension and session, he sends the Holy Spirit, baptizes with the Holy, with the Holy Spirit. Jesus baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit begins his work. The first, the first thing that happened was he got 120. And then he began, then they began to 100, Acts 115, 120. That's, that's who the, they are in Acts, the second chapter, verse 1. Then he begins to add to the church, adds to the church daily until we get to 3,000. Then we get to 5,000. Then everybody's really happy. The Jews are getting all saved. He sends missionaries back, Jewish missionaries back from Acts 2 all over the world. Then you, he introduces, and when you get to Acts 10, to the end of the, world, end of the book of Acts, you're in the uttermost parts of the earth. You're in the Gentile world. You're no longer in the Jewish world. You're in the Gentile world. You've gone to the Gentile world. And he told Peter this, and Peter was slow to get on board with that until Acts 15. When you have the church conference, which says the door should be open to everybody. Christian church, don't pick and choose. God does when he saves them. Ah, well, it'd be well worth your time to study all this stuff. You got to know where your Bible is on a daily basis to study all this stuff, and every day you should be studying this stuff. This is your life. We walk by faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God. We walk by faith and not by sight. Sight is the way the world walks. We've been sanctified and set apart by the Holy Spirit to walk completely different. You need to read this several times to get it. I can tell you that. If you think you got it now, you haven't. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for these that have come our way today, studied with us. They really need to study the Bible under the ministry of the indwelling Holy Spirit who will teach and recall. He will teach them the truths like you taught me. The Holy Spirit. Today, Father, we thank you for the privilege we had to speak with freedom. For the facilities that we have that you've provided by your grace. We didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it. You gave it to us by the principle of grace. We pray we'd be worthy to send the word of God and missionaries from this church. From as far as the word of God will touch lives. May they come to understand the significant importance of the baptism by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.